Minnesota Vikings and wide receiver Justin Jefferson agree to a massive wide receiver market setting, non quarterback market setting contract. All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson, as always, at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Get those mailbag questions in for this week's Wednesday mailbag, by the way. You can also drop a question in the YouTube comments. Uh, thank you to all the everydayers who are tuned in on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe there and everywhere you are listening to this podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is sponsored by FanDuel, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Um, some sad news today. Larry Allen passing away way too early at the age of 52. Looks like Darren Waller, New York Giants tight end, is, is going to retire. Uh, but the biggest news out there, and this was uh, this is one that we expected, didn't know when a deal was going to get done. They've been working on this contract with Justin Jefferson in Minnesota for a couple of seasons now. And uh, apparently, according to reports, Justin Jefferson turned down a deal last offseason that would have given him around $28 million per year, which would have been, you know, High among, if not top among wide receivers uh, with Tyreek Hill's deal not included. Tyreek Hill's got a kind of a funny final year in his contract that makes his kind of inflates what the value of his contract is. I don't know if he's going to see that year of his deal. Uh, I haven't checked in on that contract recently, but, you know, there was some fluff to that one. Uh, but apparently, according to reports, not a lot of fluff with this new contract for Justin Jefferson. And it resets the wide receiver market. And Matt, not only does it reset the wide receiver market, four years, $140 million, $35 million per year. He also becomes uh, jumps over last year's offseason contract of Nick Bosa as the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL and in NFL history, as these always become. When you are the highest paid in the league currently, you're the highest paid in the league ever. That's what Justin Jefferson is now, $35 million per year, Matt. A uh, huge contract. We expected it to be big. Uh, what are the implications and the ripple effects as well with this contract for Justin Jefferson and the Vikings? So we've talked a lot of receivers lately, and that's certainly been the topic of the league over the last five to ten days or whatever. And I think it's him and Tyreek as the best players in the league at this position. I mean, I'm not sure who number three is. I know who the top two are in whatever order. And Jefferson's worth more because he's younger. And, you know, I forget exactly how we do. Well, I remember how we defined a number one receiver. But I would add that he also attacks all three levels of the field. You know, I mean, he's one of those guys that he can nickel and dime you. He can intermediate route you. He can hit you deep. Man, zone, press, off, whatever, you know, doubles. I mean, he is the consummate do-it-all guy. And he might only begin to get better. I mean, maybe his numbers won't reflect that because of the quarterback situation he's dealing with now. But, I mean, no one has started their career like Justin Jefferson at this position, which is remarkable. Um, and I've heard interviews with corners that guarding Jefferson man-on-man -man kind of breaks our rules because the way he moves. You know, like you're supposed to, like, stare at their belt buckle or whatever. But Jefferson's so high cut that he's got such long limbs that he, like – breaks the laws of physics. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, of course, but I <laughs> yeah. think there's a really strong argument that he's the most not, most valuable non-quarterback in the entire league. You know, maybe Micah Parsons will get more, or maybe it's Garrett, maybe it's Bosa, maybe it's Sewell, but Jefferson's right there for most valuable. I want to look at, so obviously 35 mil per year, the the average annual value is something we always look at with players. Um, the guarantees are huge here too. 110 million of that guaranteed. And it looks like maybe most of that is pretty fully guaranteed. We're talking, you know, in the $90 million range. And that blows out, uh, blows out of the water past deals as far as guarantees go as well. It's something else we're seeing, not just per year, averages but 
guarantees in the NFL are, are climbing as well. The previous record for fully guaranteed money for a wide receiver was Tyreek Hill at $52.5 million. Wow. And so, I didn't realize that. Wow. Right. And, and some of the deals that were done this offseason, uh, Amon or St. Brown, the fully guaranteed money. Now, there's a lot more guarantees, and, and most of it's pretty fully guaranteed. You have to wait until – year two and like what you know is a modern st brown or justin jefferson going to get cut before year two of their new contract right so it's you know it's, it's pretty well guaranteed but that yeah. extra part of the guarantees doesn't kick in until later on and so that's why some of the the fully guaranteed numbers aren't the same as the guarantees that are thrown out at the time of signing but uh th that that's another thing with this contract for um for justin jefferson is that uh you know i mean this is he's going to get like at the minimum this deal he's going to get 110 million dollars right wow. and get you know 31.25 million over the course of 4 years instead of 35 million even if you're looking at this as like okay what's there's just not a lot of fluff not a lot of fat to trim off this deal not a big poison pill season and things like that so um you know it, it's a it's a really interesting deal definitely sets the wide receiver market and my question is if, if you're not Justin Jefferson, does it even affect you? Because, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. Albert Breer wrote today that, man, the big winners this offseason are the Lions, the Texans, the Texans, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the like Dolphins, Eagles, Eagles Dolphins, the teams that yeah. signed their wide receivers before this deal happened. The big losers are the Cowboys and the 49ers who haven't signed C.D. Lamb and Brandon Ayuk. Can you even, it, at the very minimum, I think if you're, IU's agent, your CD Lamb's agent, you're for sure not backing down from whatever, whatever you're proposing to the to the mm -hmm. team that you're trying to sign a deal with, right? Because it can't hurt your cause to see Jeff Justin Jefferson get thirty five million dollars, even if you don't expect to get the Justin Jefferson money. So last week I kept saying Jefferson's the most valuable of all these guys that we talked about, you know, including AJ Brown and whoever else. So recent extensions. But if I were him, I would sign last because I'm going to get the most. This deal's just too good. <laughs> like, like this will this will do. Thanks, I'll sign it. You know, right? You know, you know, all that guarantee money you laid out. It's like I don't need to wait a month. I'll just sign this thing. That'll be fine by me. If I'm Lamb and Ayuk, though, I can't still approach this number. I mean, maybe I'm especially Lamb. I'm over St. Brown, but I'm not saying. I want one dollar more than Justin Jefferson or right. a but million less, you know. If if you would have signed for 29 mil per year yeah. last week, would you now say eh, 31? Maybe now. Yeah, you know? I'd see your point. Yeah. Does it start to climb a little bit? Or if you were already saying, you know, like, hey, we, we're not gonna sign a deal before camp unless it's 30 million, right? And the Cowboys are like, oh no, we're balking at that. Well, with 28, that's kind of the number that's been set. Well, 28. Well, if you're if you're uh C Lamb's agent, you're calling back and you're like, Yeah, where, we're not going there, Jerry, yeah. where are you going with your number? Yeah, I mean CD Lamb might be the happiest of all of them, besides Jefferson. And the Jefferson family is quite happy, obviously. Um, I think C D was is the second biggest winner and I use third, but I don't think I going to get lamb money. I don't think either one's Jefferson, but I think they're all great players. Of course. Uh, that brings me to another conversation, Matt, that I want to talk about next. And okay. it's how to maneuver this. If you are a team and obviously if you have a superstar difference, making player Tyree kill Justin Jefferson, you want to pay a player like that because they make a difference on the field. Where does the money stop making sense? If it's getting a little bit crazy for wide receivers, for a player that might not be a difference maker, can you afford to keep paying those other guys the next tier of wide receivers or go back into the draft because there's so many good ones every single year? I want to ponder that idea for a second here uh, and bring up one more note as far as dollars here. Justin, Justin Jefferson, um, percentage of the cap is interesting. So the, the average... That's the most the, important thing. People right. always think about, oh, he's 10 million more than the receiver 10 years ago. It's all about percentage of the cap. Yeah, and so, you know, the title of this episode is Justin Jefferson breaks the wide receiver market. But what's interesting here is you go back, you know, a, over a decade, 13.7% of the cap is what this deal is for Justin Jefferson, which is in line, according to Bill Bar Barnwell of uh, ESPN, in 2011, Larry Fitzgerald signed a huge wide receiver contract mm -hmm. at the time. A very similar percentage of the cap then. And then the next year, Calvin Johnson in 2012 signed a big 
contract. Okay. And I remember when Calvin Johnson signed the contract, he was like, wow, the highest paid wide receiver ever. It's right in line with the percentage of the salary cap for those guys even going back more than a decade and where Justin Jefferson is right now. I think that's extremely relevant. And those are the names you want to be associated with. You know, I mean, Jefferson really started his career a lot like Larry, a lot like Calvin, a lot like Randy Moss in Minnesota. You know, I mean, and those three went on to be three of the best 10 receivers that ever lived. And I think Jefferson could be on that path. And you don't let those guys go. He's on that path. Uh, yeah. Next, let's talk more about that path. What the Vikings chose here in Justin Jefferson over Kirk Cousins next. This episode of Peacock and Williamson is sponsored by FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and it's winner take all time right now in the NBA and the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own because right now, new customers at FanDuel get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right, $150 extra to play with to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, NBA and NHL playoffs. You got WNBA going, you got Major League Baseball all summer long, every single day, which I love. And, of course, you've got NFL football. How about Justin Jefferson, league MVP? You can bet on those things. Offensive player of the year, offensive, defensive rookies in the air, and who's going to win the next Super Bowl? Tons of ways to bet on the NFL, even though it is the offseason. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every shot count. That is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I think the right choice, Matt, by the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, it sounded like they were trying to sign Kirk Cousins this offseason still and fit him both in. But if you had to choose, I think you have to choose the bigger difference maker, and that is Justin Jefferson overpaying the quarterback, even though the quarterback is the most yeah. important position on the field in Kirk Cousins. And I don't know if it's this way for every team in the NFL, but an important time for Justin Jefferson to get a deal done because – it might be a little wonky, a little awkward without Kirk Cousins. You know, Kirk Cousins isn't Patrick Mahomes, but he's a pretty good quarterback, and he's facilitated a lot of fantasy football wide receivers and statistical producers in the NFL that he's throwing the football to. That might even take a dip this year for Justin Jefferson. And people might look at this and like, oh, he got paid, and it's not, you know, the numbers aren't going to be there. Um, so that's an interesting angle to look at this one and, you know, what that might look like for, you know, and hopefully in the future, it's JJ McCarthy's doing big things and slinging it all over the place to just, Justin Jefferson, but it might be an awkward transition year in Minnesota there in the passing game. Yeah. It's a great conversation because I'm a believer seven or eight times out of 10, when you see these duos, the quarterback usually makes the receiver, you know, like I'm sure Mark Duper and Mark Clayton were great, but, or the three <laughs> amigos with Denver, but you and I could have been running routes and doing fine things. And and once in a while you get that Montana Rice special that where they're both, you know, transcendent players. And clearly in this instance, I think Jefferson was the more influential side of the battery, so to speak. And let alone cousins age coming off an injury. It's an easy decision if it comes down to those two for me. And cousins is better than he's not the, uh, Mendoza line, of course, he's way better than that. He's a good player. And we always say this. We always have to you know, say that with Cousins. But he's replaceable. Jefferson's not replaceable. Yeah, not replaceable at all. Um, well, I, I, Real quick, I want to throw one thing at you. Yeah. After letting Cousins go and treating the offseason the way they did and not having a lot of future picks, would you have entertained the Steelers offer you two first round picks for Jefferson or, you know I mean? Like, is that a potentially better move just to start it over? And yeah, yeah. I need every pick I can get entire building and, and build from a new, I, I don't think so. I think it's I don't either because you lose cousins, you have to have an identity and you've got to sell jerseys. You got to, um, it's a quicker turnaround to have for a young quarterback to have a wide receiver like Justin Jefferson to help you out. Um, I don't think he's going to be running around with his hands in the air. No one be able yeah. to get the ball there. You know what and I mean? Look, the Vikings pressed their luck one time and they traded a star wide receiver and ended up drafting Justin Jefferson because of mm -hmm. it. Right. Uh, that it, that's kind of the conversation uh, that, that I was teasing a little bit is with star players and difference making players, you got to pay him. And, you know, I, I would trade two first round picks all day for Justin Jefferson because yeah. you hope that's what you're hoping to get. And it's about a, 
coin flip hit rate anyway in the NFL draft, even in the first round. Uh, so and give him his contract on top and the contract, right? Yeah, but there are like Brandon Ayuk's the fourth option has been the fourth option the 49ers offense. Can you pay him right. thirty million dollars per year? So that's where some of this starts to get a little bit dicey. And the it's not apples to apples. No, like, and the Addison is, needs Jefferson. Cousins needs Jefferson. Right. The world would still spin in San Francisco without Ayuk. Right. And then you look at the Tennessee Titans and you think, oh, okay, I get it. You're not built around a passing game and a star receiver, so you let so you trade away AJ Brown and then you draft the receiver. Well, that didn't quite work out as well as it did for the Vikings mm-hmm. when they drafted Justin Jefferson. Um, you look at the the Kansas City Chiefs even, and then they got a superstar quarterback, and that's the time to do it because of what a quarterback could do for the rest of the team and the rest of the wide receiver group. And now the Chiefs have won back-to-back Super Bowl, so it hasn't hurt them. But as far as the wide receiver room has gone, they've had some problems trying to replace Tyreek Hill over there in Kansas City. So even yeah. though there are tons of really talented receivers coming into the draft every single year, it's not that easy to pluck the right one. And I think the better your quarterback situation, the more easy it is there. And and so that's where I'm kind of like, okay, well, where does it start to end with teams saying, gosh, this is stupid money at wide receiver. This guy doesn't make the difference. He's not the straw that stirs the drink. We're going to go into the draft and try to develop our receivers there because the money's too crazy. And you mentioned there's more to it than even on the field. This isn't all just papers and stats and an Excel spreadsheet and accountants because – the second you draft McCarthy, everyone that wears purple's job is to make McCarthy's life easier. I, I don't care if it's the lunch lady, the dude in the parking lot, you know, the guy that's doing the fields. I mean, let alone your star receiver. And as you mentioned, when you take your young son to the Vikes game, there's got to be someone's jersey you're wearing. You know what I mean? Like you got to keep interest up. You got to have stars. You got to put a guy on the billboard. And I don't believe in tanking in the NFL, like trading everyone, kind of losing on purpose, because I think that's a really hard stench to get out of your locker room for and, years. You know, and it's you're going through. You're probably going to churn over an entire. It's almost like a sacrificial GM and head coach that you have to hire for a while. Yeah, you who signs I mean? up for that? Well, though no GM is going to want to do that because they're just getting things right for the next guy. Yeah, and unlike some other sports, you know when. LeBron came out or Wemby or some of these guys that anybody could see, there's a good chance that I end up picking third or fourth and I don't even get that guy. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You you could tank all you want and end up with the fifth pick. So Justin Jefferson, that's big time money, 35 mil per year. And uh, that deal is done. Let's see if that helps or hinders the other big Wide receiver money contracts coming down the the pipe in the uh, coming down the pike. Is it the pipe or the pike? Uh, I, I think it's supposed to be the pike, right? But it, it became pipe work, though. coming down the pipe, you know, down the pipe with the baseball terminology, throwing a, a pitch down the middle of the yeah. So yeah, it's a good. Quote. I think I say pipe. I think it's supposed to be pike because it's. A I story. think you're right about that too. Yeah. Whatever. Question, it is, however, are you, you a little more? Are you a little more nervous as a Niner guy? The 49ers are weird, but it's not like a, it's not like today. I was like, oh man, they should have got, got this deal done yesterday. Like, I mean, I've been saying, I was like, what, chance, are you, yeah. what are you waiting for? Get this done before all this big money comes in. The 49ers signed their deals late. Uh, all of the yeah, big yeah. deals they've done, Debo, Kittle, Fred Warner, Bosa, even further down the line. They've all, and after the first day of training camp, those deals had gotten done. And for Bosa, it was the week before the season started. No ramp up for Bosa, and it affected him last year. So that's where, for the 49ers, you're going all in. You're trying to keep everybody and, and be as good as you can in this Super Bowl window. So the, the, the worry for the 49ers would be that it's an extended holdout hurts you in the end of the season and then I you start slow or I you pulls a hammy because he doesn't have a ramp up for week one and we and Nick Bosa did admit it did hurt him to start the season last year and he still had a really good year but um that's where you start to get worried as if it could be and then you you know CD Lamb and Brandon Ayuk if these if these negotiations don't go well for these teams they're on their fifth it's not like they're free agents they're on their fifth year option so at some point they're going to show up and play but then does it you know is it bad feelings does that impact the locker room and then you know then you're then you're going to the franchise tag the next season 
And it, it just could get a little bit uglier than, mm-hmm. than you probably want it to be. But maybe that's the path to Brandon Ayuk not being a 49er is them thinking, man, this is crazy money. I, I don't think it fits in with what we have to do. They got to pay Brock Purdy, by the way, and they're already paying the second highest non quarterback in the league in Nick Bosa right now. So they do have to, to, they do have some hard decisions to make there. I think they're going to sign Ayuk and it's going to be Debo gone next year, but there is a path where. I could see, you know, playing on the fifth year option. I don't think it's a likely path, but it is a path. And they say, okay, well, this is this is too much money. This it's not going to work with how our team build is right now. And then we're talking about a tag and trade next offseason with mm-hmm. with an, with a very unhappy Brandon Ayuk potentially. Along those lines, the last thing I have on this, and I would throw T. Higgins very much in this equation too, is it's week ten and you got a hammy or an ankle, and hey, coach, I'm going to sit this one out. You know what I mean? Like that could happen too. They can make right. business decisions. You know, yeah, you're 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 looking for that big that big payday. And if you don't get mm-hmm. it now, that changes a lot for how you. Or maybe you you want the guy who's going for the big payday in the in his contract year still too. For, for yeah, 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 yeah. So T. Higgins, a lot of motivation. T. Higgins is an interesting one because he seems okay with it. You know, he I know he hadn't signed his free agent uh, or his um, franchise tag tender right. yet. And I think that's just kind of how things go with those things. But um, it sounds like they're gonna, he's going to play under that, and he'll probably get more money next season because that's how he plays it out. So I think he's okay with it. And I, think- I don't know if he's okay with it or if he just realizes the Brown family's never going to give me this. I can cry and whine all I want, but this is what I'm getting. Right? It's going to get him the most money if he has a good year this year. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he'll very likely have him better- on the open market. Right, he'll likely have a better year this year than he did last year, and you've already been through the franchise tag once, so that's where a huge payday could be for T. Higgins mm-hmm. will be the best free agent wide receiver next offseason if, if Lamb and IU get signed. Yeah, I hear you. There you go. Uh, interesting stuff with the wide receiver market around the NFL. Very sad news. Hall of Fame guard Larry Allen passes away at the age of 52 next This episode of Peacock and Williamson is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets and whatever tickets you want to buy for any kind of sporting events. NFL, you see the schedule out, you want to circle a couple dates and go to those games. Maybe you want to catch a ball game near you. Last minute tickets, you can get up to 60% savings by buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy shows, theater events, whatever it is near you, near you. And my favorite aspect of game time, all in pricing. See the total up front, no surprise fees at checkout. I hate those hidden fees. You can skip those with game time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets for the NBA finals or whatever event you want to see with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Man, this is a tough one. Larry Allen. He's only fifty-two years old. Matt, uh, yeah. former. Former 49er is how I like to uh, talk about Larry Allen. But obviously, Dallas Cowboys, great. Sonoma State here locally, just up the road from where I'm at, is very uh, right. cool. Sonoma State, the whole conference, they don't even have a football team anymore at Sonoma State, where, where he played in the early 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Larry Allen uh, passed away, 52 years old, and apparently – he was on vacation in Mexico with his family. So this wasn't like, uh, you know, I was, I was like, Oh man, was there like something that Larry Allen had been dealing with health wise for a while? I don't think that's the case. So I, I don't know. I don't have any other details here on, on what happened with Larry Allen. Um, but uh, on vacation, this is the, the official statement from the Dallas Cowboys it says the Dallas Cowboys are very saddened to share the Cowboys legend, Super Bowl champion Cowboys ring of honor member, and Pro Football Hall of Famer Larry Allen passed away suddenly while on vacation in Mexico with his family on Sunday. Larry, known for his great athleticism and incredible strength, was one of the most respected, accomplished offensive linemen to ever play in the NFL. And man, uh, he was he was kind of a freak of nature with how he could move at his size with his power. 
and it's rare that you're the biggest, most powerful guy, and you can also move the way Larry Allen did. Yeah, I mean, he's only a year older than me, and you know, it's like wow, you know. Um, but I grew up. John Hanna was considered the greatest guard of all time. You know, sometimes like whoever's growing up now, Jerry Rice is that guy. I mean, sometimes there's positions where it's widely regarded who's number one when you're a kid or whatever, when you're learning football. And that was John Hanna. Now, I think since I've had a clue what I was looking at and or and or doing this professionally, that Larry Allen's the best guard I've ever seen. I mean, I really do. Better than Hutchinson or whoever you like. I mean, this guy was so powerful and like, I mean, and moved so well and people might not remember this, but he was not an original member of that awesome Cowboys O-line. He came a little late to the scene and lasted a little longer than the Nate Newtons and Stepnoskis from what I remember. He's just a little younger than them, you know? Um, and speaking of that team, Emmett, Irvin, Aikman, they're awesome. And we had an amazing conversation about Emmett last week and the all-time rushing champs. And all three of those guys would have been stars for this version of the Panthers or the worst team in the league. That being said, that Cowboys O-line to me was the most important part of that dynasty, without question. I remember being a kid watching a Cowboys game and uh, it was probably Monday Night Football and John Madden you know, was one of the few people that would give props to offensive lines. And it was like, oh, this is the first offensive line where everybody's over 300 pounds. It's Actually, Stepnoski wasn't. I only know that because he used to come back to pit. He was really small. Stepnoski <laughs> was like 250. And then everybody else looked like Andre the Giant next to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because <laughs> you can't be less than 300 pounds now. Yeah. Uh, and they were moving people out of the way. And look, uh, you know, I, I kind of have fun with it. And, and I'm a Cowboys hater, you know, growing up a 49ers fan. Sure. But um, I always talk about how Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith are so overrated because of it. It's because they had guys like Larry Allen in front of them. I mean, yeah. uh, unbelievable. Larry Allen, not under overrated and, and perhaps underrated throughout his career with what he could do. A uh, freak of nature guy, even later in his career, watching him move guys around um, when he wasn't even in his prime uh, was really fun to watch. Uh, truly an all timer best guard ever. Uh, and, and I think I, so. I mean, that's just a bummer, man. When you hear about 52 years old, it's, it's way too young. So, and I'm sure we have some listeners that don't remember them or don't remember those great cowboy teams, but go YouTube Larry Allen's highlights and you'll be like, Whoa, this guy just throws grown men out of the bar. I mean, and, and the, the athleticism too. Uh, at yeah, yeah. Peacock on Twitter, I retweeted something that Nate Tice had had tweeted earlier, hmm. and it's a play where there was an interception. And uh, I think it might have been against the Steelers, actually, man. I can't remember which team it was now. Um, but, uh, you know, the guys, the, the the defender, linebacker, I can't remember who it is, you know, has a free run down the sideline after this interception going to the end zone. Larry Allen chases him down at 330 wow. pounds. The way he moves was just unbelievable. So if you want to see that highlight just to show how athletic he was at his size, being the strongest guard in the league as well, uh, you can find that retweet at BD Peacock and uh, just a, a phenomenal player, phenomenal talent. So really Amazing. sad to hear those that news. Have you heard the Darren Waller like breakup song that the new track he released this week, Matt? I have not. Oh, I, man. You, athletes putting out music usually doesn't go the way you we not, uh, stick to your lane. You say it's a big topic for me. We don't really have time to go all the way into that rabbit hole, Matt. But to me, sports and music don't match at all. One I, wants I, to be the other, and one wants to be the other, and they're not it, the same skill set at it all. Takes, uh, it, it take, you, athletes seem to think, and and you see this with like musicians all the time that think they're athletes too. Mm -hmm. like, you have to devote your life to this thing. You don't just go like, <laughs> oh, I like music. I can make music. I'll and you have a guitar. producer, and it's like ridiculous auto tune throughout the whole track on your voice. It, it, it doesn't work out. Every athlete thinks he's going to drop an album and it's going to be hot, and it never is. Uh, and you know, so anyway, Darren Waller, uh, you, most of the most of the folks out there, let me know if you think it's if you like his track. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have a hunch where we're going with that. Yeah, but I, but anyway, <laughs> uh, Darren Waller doing other things, and that's because the New York Giants think that Darren Waller is going to retire, and that's going to be it for him. So uh, Darren Waller potentially done in the NFL, maybe trying to launch a music career for himself. Um, 
Uh, he did throw his heart on the line, though, with this. Uh, and he was, uh, and I believe the breakup was with a, a WNBA player, Kelsey Plum, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? And that's what the, uh, uh, the, the track is about. And there's an actress playing her in, in the video. Um, it's, it's worth watching just for, you know, whether you like it or not, just to be like, okay, this is interesting. Um, but Darren Waller, let's talk about the football side of things. Darren Waller retiring, what does it mean for the New York Giants, man? Yeah, I kind of feel like this has been hinted at for almost over a year. Like, I think there was some doubt that he had played last year. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. there were some injuries and stuff as well. Uh, you mentioned off the air, you know, Theo Johnson, the Penn State kid, he could get out there quite a bit. You know, I mean, there's opportunity there. Play your young guys. But I, I just wanted to take a second to commend Waller, though. I mean, his career path is pretty darn cool. I mean, he was a six-round pick, I think. And from Georgia Tech, that was a monster wide receiver. And people are like, oh, he's like Calvin Johnson. And that's yeah. crazy. He was course. the last of those Georgia Tech receivers because Calvin Johnson came out. I don't know how Georgia Tech was finding these guys who were 6'5". Running they threw the ball like 10 times. And, and they, yeah, they were basically flexed out tight ends. But then they ran 4'3 and 6'5". It's like, how do these guys not go somewhere else? Do you remember Stephen <laughs> Hill? To Georgia. Stephen Hill, do you remember? Yeah, it's another good one, right? Another guy, I think he went to the Jets, and he was tall and fast. He didn't work out. Calvin Johnson, obviously, was became Megatron. Darren Waller kind of didn't work as a wide receiver, then transitioned to tight end and, and became yeah. a ridiculous tight end in the NFL. Yeah, that's where I was going with it. And I assume he did plenty of blocking at Georgia Tech. Not that anyone's going to confuse him with Rob Gronkowski as an inline blocker, but at least he could make that transition and be Ooh. physical and – get his hands on linebackers and, you know, make a difference that way. But the fact that he, you know, publicly dealt with alcoholism and all that stuff and, you know, didn't give up and transformed himself as a player and as presumably as a human being and went on to, you know, beat the odds. I think that's really commendable, you know? Yeah, absolutely. He come through the other side of the, uh, the substance abuse. And, you know, I think that's probably where this, um, this, uh, this musician, sort of arc in his career is coming from very internal, very thoughtful person and, 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 uh, and, and going through things like that. And it changes you. And um, so really interesting career path and for sure commendable to see where his career was, how he transitioned from different positions through substance abuse to come out on the other side and be one of the best tight ends in the NFL. And it looks like he's going to hang it up. And uh, I think the New York giants have some interesting options there. Daniel Bellinger, fourth round guy from a couple years ago, that uh, is, is a solid tight end option for them, probably steps into the number one role right away as we see what happens with the development of the rookie Theo Johnson, who physically is is another guy um, not quite as freaky as Darren Waller was as far as, you know, size and speed. But Theo Johnson put up some numbers at the oh, yeah, and is a Big really body. interesting developmental tight end there, probably more of a tight end too in year one, but can end up being a, a guy for you if you're if you're. You know, a lot of listeners are into the dynasty stuff. If you're a, if you're a dynasty football player, Theo Johnson might have just gotten a little bit of a stock up there. Yeah, and you know, last thing I got is, I mean, obviously it's a very now, especially a very young group of pass catchers, presumably led by neighbors. But I like Wandell Robinson. I thought Hyatt did more than just run fast in a straight line as a rookie, and Slayton's not bad. Like this, this might be a respectable, young, improving group of receivers. Yeah, uh, someday maybe they'll find a quarterback over there in New York. And then uh, possibly that's the game. All right. Thanks everybody <laughs> for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure you're all subscribed up on YouTube or everywhere you listen to this podcast. Get those mailbag questions in for Wednesday's episode at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL or drop a question in the YouTube comments. Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.